When the champs feed for hits, some go absolutely crazy. Others just relax and enjoy. The rivalry in the stands is getting stronger. Competition on the track, getting better. Welcome to TVJ's Champs Radar. This week, it's a feast of sprinting from the Camperdown Classic. We feature a top urban area school, plus lots more, including the Western Relays from Montego Bay. It was CAC Under-20 champion Devon Minzi of Bogwalk who took the top spot. Minzi the favorite in four, gets off to a great start. Already a front row of Kingston College and steps away from the field. Commanding performance from Javon Minzi. What's the time going to be? 10.61, the flash time. That's the fastest of the day so far. Rounded up to 10.64. Javon Minzi looking smooth. One of the favorites for Class 1 boys, 100 and championships. 10.28 his personal best and looking in very good form. It was a good run, first 100 for the season, so I'm pretty glad with the time. The start was a little bit poor, but coming out of Majai phase, coming to the middle and finish, it was really extremely good. But it was St. Jago's Kadish Willis who had struck big first. Sent away. Stewart gets up well. Bedford of Kingston College runs well. Kadish Willis comes forward. Kadish Willis goes away from Bedford of KC. Oh, that's a fast time as well for Kadish Willis. 10.74. The fastest of the day so far. Impressive. No, not really. Not at all. Not at all. Did, did um, 10.79 at JC in January on grass official. So I'm not really pleased with this performance. Because I know I could go about 10.5. And third overall went to Calabar's Jason Drake, who showed he is one who could sneak into the champs final. Drake of Calabar in three gets away well. Chambers in lane seven is also running well. But Drake is in con control and goes away from the field to win it. Second spot going to Benbow of Camperdown. The flash time, not a bad one for Jason Drake of Calabar, 10-8-0. I did just that because I could have run at least 10-5. I think I could have run that, but I just went out there and said that I was going to execute my race to the last best of my ability, and that's what I did. Well, there were many impressive performances in the Boys Class 1 event. Here are some of the highlights. Away. McLean of Calabar comes sweetly out of the blocks and gets to the front early. Thompson steps forward for Pepin. McLean of Calabar holds on though. Third spot going to Brian O'Shaughnessy on the inside. Away. Mackenzie of Calabar. Walker of KC now to the front. Brown of Tisha Scolding trying to come through. Walker of KC wins it. In class two, it was Calabar's Michael O'Hara who continued his dominance. He started in lane one and finished as number one, 10.98 his time. Jamaica College's Kenyon Patterson was next best on the day. He sped to 11.02 seconds to comfortably take his heat. And even more comfortable was the man who placed third overall. The man to watch away they go, he is a fine starter and gets up well. Goes to the front, quickly does Raheem Chambers. Mackenzie of Kingston College on the inside battling with Fowler for second. But Chambers is looking strong, the brilliant on the back straight for St. Jago at 4 by one And showing just what he's made of the Class 3 record holder in his first year of Class 1. A bright run in the 100 meters. My first 100 for the season, so I just went out there to just work on what I'm weak in, you know. And that's it. Let's execute it and finish the race. I'm working on my dry face. My coach said it was very good because I, I carried my dry face to 40 meters, so, you know, that's very good. With the top sprinters from Homewood Technical in the West, it was a chance for some other stars to shine in the East for the girls class 1 100 meters. Melissa Williams in lane 6, the one to watch from St. Jacob. She is away quickly. Edwards tries to come with her. Edwards goes to the front and snatches it. Brilliantly done by Maya Edwards of St. Andrew. Gets by Melissa Williams in a battle finish. Edwards winning overall with a 12.08 seconds ahead of Williams who posted 12.11 while Sheen Brooks Gillings secured third overall after winning her heat. 
Center of the track, sent away. Oh, US gets out well for the Queen's School. Brooks Gillings runs well for St. Jacob on her outside. Brooks Gillings has the advantage. US can't clear a man. Brooks Gillings wins it. That's a fine victory. Satima Chambers closes into third spot. But Ushin Brooks Gillings, formerly a Falcon, now at St. Jacob and still going strong. Impressive. In class two, it was St. Jago's Natalia White who dominated proceedings. She won her heat in 11.96 seconds, turning back the challenge of a top hurdler, Peter Gay Williams of Camperdown. Next best on the day was Wilmer's girls Janelle Smith, speeding from the outside to stop the clock at 12 seconds flat. Well, had a bad start as usual, needed a little more aggression, but it was good same way, felt strong going home and everything, so it's a good look for the season. From the start, I've been trying to get a better start, but it's not working out, so I guess I've just, I just have to work on my finish. And third overall went to Jamaica's top junior female sprinter of 2012. First victory this season, she gets up well and goes to the front immediately Shona helps away from the rest and in control and maybe shutting it down as well not putting out too much Shona help just 12-0-2 that's her first time coming across the line first for this season twice beaten before but she gets that first win that should help with the confidence in class 3 the top spot went to a young girl who has become one with winning her time at 12.39 seconds. Rochelle Burton is a great starter in lane two for St. Andrew. And she's away from the field early. Outside, smelly. Left well back. Rochelle Burton on a canter. This is easy. This is comfortable. She is the former triple champion from class four. Now in class three, could she do it again? She looks in very good form. And that is a very, very good time as well. But at champs, she will not have things her own way. Manchester's Sydney Marshall showed why with the 12.55. Away they go for section two. Marshall of Manchester gets up well. Williams of Camperdown also runs well. The Manchester number one coming through now in lane four. Sydney Marshall wins it. The class four silver medalist from last year. That's a nippy time as well for Sydney Marshall of Manchester. And Excelsior's Renee Shaw got her name in the mix as well. 12.59, her final time as she held on from Manchester's 2012 Class 4 finalist Shani Morrison who clocked 12.60. Class 4 certainly had its moments. St. Jago's Kimone Shaw showed why she'll be hard to beat at champs 12.31, reasons why. Kimone Shaw, the favorite, runs in seven. Gets off to a great start. Ebony Forbes of St. Andrew trying to stay with her. But Kimon Shaw is a little bit too good for this field. In fact, way too good for this field. And that's going to be an impressive time as well. San Diego secured the second spot as well through Sashel Freita, who sped to 12.66 to win her heat. And very technicals Andrea Thomas closed out the top three overall after clocking 12.77 in Shaw's heat. So some great sprinting at the Camperdown Classic, but let's slow things down with the 800 meters. Rayon Black of Excelsior dominating the Class 1 boys event. Yes, Black, the former Ferncourt and Wilmers athlete, continuing his brilliant form this season. He crossed the line in a creditable 1 minute 56.91 seconds. Today I just came out here to focus on my race, execute it the proper and the right way that I planned with my coach. I train hard straight through the season. I know I can do better and I can expect a lot more from Ryan Black throughout the rest of the season. What was the plan going into today's race? Well, to just come out here, run the first 400, not as fast as my last 400, and just stick to where if I was in front, I just maintain, continue at the pace, which was what happened during the race. So I just maintain my race, stay in my part, just obstruct, don't obstruct no one else and just execute it the right way. Calabar's Jorel Belafonte took on the distance for the first time this season. He worked his way to 1 minute 57.12 seconds for second overall. It wasn't that bad for me. I was happy with the performance. You know, my coach and I had a discussion prior to the race and he just wanted me to go out there and execute the race plan. No biggie. What was the race plan? 
He just wanted me to get the first lap under 60 seconds and make sure that I run that 800 under 2 minutes. I need to get the real sharpness, so that was the plan. In class 2, it was another Calabar man who took the top spot. Orville Dixon dismissing JC's Nakeem Hemmings and running away to take the top spot in 1 minute 58.55 seconds. He was the only class 2 athlete under 2 minutes on the day as second overall went to Excelsior's Shemar Hilton. He found an extra bit of belief in the closing stages to clip JC's Dirk Williamson and record 2 minute 00.61 seconds. Williamson was timed at 2 minute 00.71 seconds. On the girls' side, Felon Ferguson of St. Hughes continued her fast rise over the distance. She recorded yet another personal best, this time stopping the clock at a smart 2 minutes 10.94 seconds. Tasca Johnson of Ver placed second overall, 2 minutes 12.61, while Monique McPherson of St. Jago, 2 minutes 13.02, was third overall. And in Class 2, it was a 2012's Class 3 double winner, Tiffany James of the Peen High, who reigned supreme, taking several glances back before speeding home to 2 minutes 16.94 seconds. Well, it was okay and I just go out there and do my best because my coach told me to go out there and run because first time running 800 meter as class 2. I feel alright and I know that I go out there and run 216 last year when I come to camp and run around 218 so it's a bit of improvement. And that's about it for our first segment on TVJ's Champs Radar. We'll be back with lots more. Welcome back to TVJ's Champs Radar. The years 1962 to 1975 are a milestone in the history of Champs. They are special, especially to this great school from North Street. Under the radar this week, Kingston College. On North Street in downtown Kingston, we find Kingston College, easily one of the most famous institutions in the land of wood and water. The school is not only famous for its academic and sporting achievements, but also its trademark purple and white colors. The school possesses a plethora of records and one which probably stands above most is their 31 titles in the Boys Athletics Championships, more titles than any other school in the history of the more than 100-year-old championship. In fact, KC racked up a winning streak of 14 consecutive titles between 1972 and 1975, a feat which is yet to be matched by another school on the boys' side. An 18-year drought was broken in 2001 when the school rattled up another win streak, this time totaling six titles. The school has intensified its preparation for the March 12-16 Issa Grace Kennedy Boys and Girls Athletics Championships, but in all of this, a balance has to be struck between academics and athletics. First and foremost for me, the school is about learning. All right? It's not about um, track and field or football or anything like that. It really is primarily about learning. Um, however, where students have talents and you can hone and develop those talents in certain your muscles so you have the rounded development. But, but here's the thing, it cannot be all about track and field or any sport for that matter to the detriment of academics. And so many times we'll be saying, youngsters, if you're going to do three days out there, the other two days you have to be doing your work. And also, we're very, very clear, if you're not achieving the standards required by the school, I'm not even talking about by or no, the standards required by the school, if you're not achieving that, then that's the end of the story. While the school loves to win silverware, Principal Dave Myrie says it's not at all cost. Winners have a particular quality about them um, and many of them sometimes intrinsically motivated as well. So, um, you know, again, our view is we want to win, um, but at the same point, at the same point in time, we're going out there um, to be fair in our play, to ensure we adhere to all the rules, regulations that's there and that when we win, um, we win knowing that we've actually stayed clearly within the rules, regulations and what's required. But, um, you know, winners are always motivated and Kingston College has a history of winning. And so, to be frank with you, um, it, it's like it's in Kingston College's DNA. For the principal, it's all about more running, jumping and throwing this year and less talking. We expect to go to champs and we expect to do our best um, and let our actions do the talking for us. 
as against our mouths. Sportsmaster Noel Channer has seen it all during his 16 years as a physical education teacher. He revealed a bit about the systematic and strategic approach this year compared to 2012. To allow the youngsters to do less rigors, I mean, in terms of their performance, we, we try to smooth them out and to allow each athlete to do more, more than they can actually manage. And by this, I mean that if there are injuries to the athletes and they are not properly healed, then we, we try to make sure that the event that they are doing will not be aggravated by, 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 by the, the, this event. One gold medal! Two gold, gold medal. medal! Three gold medal! Four gold medal! Five gold, gold medal! Six gold medal! Seven gold medal! Eight gold, gold medal! Ten gold medal! Ten gold medal! Ten gold medal! Inspirational captain Clive Pullen, who specializes in the vertical and horizontal jumps, along with decathlon competitor Darren Hunter and a pole vault specialist Xavier Boland, are expected to lead the charge for the Purple and Whites at Champs 2013 as they aim to overcome one particular challenge. The time we had to prepare for the competition, the championships, because of um, the champs being uh, the, time, the date being closer to um, in our season. So it feels a bit rushed, but um, as, as we still find a way to um, not peak before or after the competition. We'll pace ourselves. While they may not be favourites for the coveted title, Kingston College will again be inspired by their motto, Cadere Cedere Non Potest, the brave may fall but never yield. So expect nothing less than the usual gutsy and fighting performance from Kingston College at what is the greatest showpiece for high school athletes in the Western Hemisphere. Well, KC had teams at both the Camperdown Classic and Western Relays, but at Camperdown they were left well beaten in Class 1. That's where Calabar reigned supreme. Javon Menzi was expected to give Bogwa the early advantage, but when he was held by Jason Drake, Calabar dominated. Now Francis is on the second leg for Calabar and flying. Bogwa tried to stay close, Camperdown left back. The men in green and black in control goes away from KC. Camperdown on the inside, but Kanabar away on this final leg. Kingston College trying to close them down. It's not going to happen. Kanabar will win it. The battle on for second. Senchego snatches it from Camperdown. KC finishes back in fourth. In the girls' class, one equivalent, very technical, and San Diego battled stride for stride until the final leg. Here's the final chain, San Diego just ahead of very technical. Sharika Jackson has the baton, and that means the race is over. She's very comfortable. That is a stroll in the park for Sharika Jackson. The hurdler, Christine McCarthy, no competition on that anchor leg. That girl is going to be tough to beat in 2013. All the big guns were in one heat of the class two boys sprint relay. But it was Jamaica College who evaded the challenge of San Diego and Calabar. The team of Wazim Williams, Keneal Patterson, Keno Blackwood and Devon Baker scorching to a brilliant 41.38 seconds. San Diego 41.66 and Calabar 41.85 placed second and third respectively. Wilmers dominated the girls class 2 event. The speedy Shauna Helps ran a super curve before Janelle Smith brought things home in super fashion. San Diego boys took the top spot in class 3, speeding to 44.20 seconds in their heat. In the girls class 3, Wilmers secured another gold medal winning in 47.83 ahead of Manchester High 48.06. And in class 4, it was San Diego racing to 48.70 to dismiss Camperdown 49.34. Manchester High who won section 2 were third overall in 49.68 seconds.
And with that, we take our final break and return with action from the West. Welcome back to TVJ Champs Radar. We go to Montego Bay for action from the Milo Western Relays. Well, some top teams lined up in the sprint relays and some top names as well. In the Class 1 boys, it was World Youth Champion Odell Todd with his Green Island team trying to keep the Western flag flying high against Kingston College and Wilmers. Fine change by Casey. Casey. Wilmers on the inside. It's Todd of Green Island. KC lead, KC, Timmy Lloyd Thompson, KC, Green Island and Walmart. KC's winning time 40.28 seconds with Green Island 40.37, placing second ahead of Wilmers who clocked 40.59. The race was the first of 2013 for World Junior Bronze Medalist Odin Skeen who suffered an ankle injury in November. It, it, it went well because we didn't really do much changes and I just coming off of injuries so to me, this, is, this, this day went well, but you know, coming up to Gibson will be a different thing. Skiing happy, so too Todd, who ran a scorching anchor. Overall, it's a good performance for the team. We are on 40.3 and we are on 40.5 last year, so it's a good performance. What's been your preparation like coming into Milo Western Relays and for the rest of the competition season? Well, it's, training has been going well. We can see that um, I'm in a good shape, so... Coming for the rest of the season, you shall see some good running. And for champs, a special tribute. I'm just going out there for to put everything out on the track because it's my last year. And this um, our past principal, Miss Ada Mitchell, she, she had passed on and we're dedicating this season towards her. So I'm just going to do everything for this season. The girls' sprint relay class one was another fantastic battle between Homewood Technical and Edwin Allen. Edwin Allen looked as if they had the race all but one, but that's before Homewood's Shanice Bonner, formerly of the Queen's School, took the bat on. Homewood winning in 45.28 seconds, Edwin Allen 45.37 and St. Elizabeth well back in third, 48.61. In class 2 for boys, it was Wilmers who dominated. They produced a record 41.87 to dismiss KC 42.50 and Monroe College 42.81. On the girls side, it was Homewood Technical again, racing away from Edwin Allen to win in 46.26, ahead of the ladies from Frankfield 46.79 and Spot Valley 49.29. Wilmers secured their second sprint relay victory when they won class 3 in a respectable 44.35 seconds. Kingston College 45.35 and Cornwall College 45.96 rounded out the top three, but their coach Michael Russell was not totally pleased. The competition was, was, was keen as well, but we really expected to win, the, 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 especially the class 1, 4x1. We expected to do a little bit better in the, in the, in the class 3, but um, in terms of preparation, as I said before, um, that was a little bit limited, so we'll be going back to try and sort out a few um, issues. Edwin Allen lost out in classes 1 and 2, but in classes 3 and 4, they were queens. In class 3, they ran a superb 46.59 seconds, just outside Homewood's 2011 record of 46.52. Green Island 48.20 and Stets 48.33 were second and third, respectively. And in class 4, the ladies in blue sped to 49.09 ahead of Homewood, 50.44 and Herbert Morrison, 52.34 seconds. From the west to the east, where Buff Bay are champions of the Eastern Athletics Championships, which was held over two days at the National Stadium. Buff Bay amassed 629.5 points to finish ahead of Oberlin 572.5 and St. Mary High 529. Buff Bay also secured the boys title while Oberlin secured the girls crown. But amidst all the celebration, there is a problem. Buff Bay did exceptionally when I am proud of Buff Bay High School. I'm proud of the Eastern Zone specifically because it is sending a message to the rest of Jamaica that from the east, 
there's a lot of potential and we need to work on the potential in the east and stop allowing our athletes to be taken away by other schools. Oh yes, definitely. Most of my top athletes, um, they, are, they are snatched away from us. Let's put it that way. So what can the eastern schools do to keep their top athletes from switching to the more traditional powers? I can't stop them, but let me tell you something about my, my students. These students, they don't normally leave, especially the girls. But some of the males, they just um, are easily more prone to, to just pulse out here. Once they come to boys' champs on the way, because one of the young men was taken away now. He was my brand medalist in long jump at, at champs um, last year. Also, he was a um, semi finalist in 100 and 200. World Junior Representative Jodine Williams has been at St. Mary High for seven years. She took another sprint double at Eastern Champs and was asked if she has ever been approached by top girls schools. Yes, I do, but I've turned them down. Why? Because I want to step my school and, as I said, put it on the map and show them what country school like my school can do. Well, not all athletes share Jodine's sentiments, and so the debate continues. For both Buff Bay and Oberlin, it's now looking ahead to champs to see how many points they can get against the big boys. For Oberlin, it will be tough. Well, looking at um, individual events, not much of that. But um, for uh, this young man here, which is um, Sean Dale McLaren, he did very well in the 400. And um, I could send him on a flat four, work on him for championship. But normally I'm going to send a medley um, boys team and a medley girls team. And the Heptathlon, we had bronze medal in the Heptathlon last year. We're class one girls, Trudy McCullough. I'm going to try her for the 400 hurdles because she won the hurdles. She won the 100 meter hurdles um, record time and um, the, the long jump record to six point, um, no, five point six three. Sorry, and uh, um, some of these athletes I'm going to lose them because it's her final year. I think that I can go final, as I said earlier. No injury affect me. Later on this season, I will do it. And for the champions, Buff Bay. Well, that's going to be very um, difficult, but of course, um, I'm working with them. Um, the, the group will be much smaller, so I know I can get some results of them. It's going to be hard work, but we can do it. In terms of the expectations going into champs, I mean, what are those at this stage? What I'm thinking, last year we finished um, four, 14th in the boys section. I would love to be in the top 10, um, and I'm going to be working on that. The girls were 22nd, and I'm working to get them in the top 20. So though, that's what I'm working on right now. We wish Buff Bay, Oberlin, and all the Eastern schools the very best at champs. And we close out this week's show with our Did You Know feature. Did you know that Manchester High has won girls champs on three occasions? They lost one in 1995 where Tulia Robinson was one of the stars. Well, that's the way we close out this week's show. Stay with Television Jamaica for the best build-up to the Issa Boys and Girls Athletics Championships.